I'd like to share a thought that came to me about an hour ago. And it came to me right after I did that video, The Purge has begun, so you guys will be the first to hear this thought. It's amazing at the number of people that had joined the forces of Satan, whether it's witchcraft, sorcery, or even Satanism, and they appear to take it extremely lightly, not really thinking of the consequences of their choices and their actions. I want to read a scripture to you, taken from the book of Revelation, the 16th chapter, reading the 8th to the 15th verse. And I want to show you what is going to happen to the seat of the beast and those that surround themselves with the beast and those that do the beast's will. Now, in this world, in this life, the beast has many benefits that you could take advantage of while you're here on this plane of existence. In most cases, when you're showered with the beast's gifts, you really don't think about the judgment that come as a result of you accepting the gifts of the beast. Very few people that had started out playing on the devil's playground had, in a sense, woken up and became aware of the punishment or the wicked path that they began to follow. And they turned around and went back, which was quite wise for them to do. But I want you to pay close attention to what happens to those that surround themselves around the beast's throne, around the seat of the beast. And I want you to pay close attention to what happens to them when God's wrath is poured upon the seat of the beast. In this scripture, it's not just the beast that's affected. It's those that follow the beast because once that fifth vial is poured upon the beast's seat, then things will begin to happen to even those that follow the beast, those that align themselves with the beast. And their hearts will become so hardened to the point where even as they suffer, from the wrath of God, their heart is so hardened that they cannot find it within themselves to repent. This is what I meant in prior videos when I said that certain people, the sodomites, cannot be saved. Now, some people took offense to that. But this scripture clearly demonstrates the spirit and the mind of those people that have aligned themselves with the satanic program. Reading Revelation 16 chapter, starting at the 8th verse, it reads as follows. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. 
I'm going to read that eighth verse again. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun. And power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. So men will be scorched with the fire of the sun. The ninth verse says, And men were scorched with great heat. Keep in mind, this is the heat from the sun. And blasphemy the name of God, which has power over these plagues. In other words, God is the one that has the power to stop these plagues. But instead of repenting, they blasphemy the name of God, which has power over these plagues. And they repented not to give him glory. The 10th verse says, And the angel of the Lord poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness. And they gnawed their tongues for pain, and blasphemy the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores, and repented not of their deeds. The twelfth verse reads, And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up. So not only these men and women of the earth, the ones that align themselves with the beast, not only would they be burned with the sun and with the heat of the sun, the water was dried up where they cannot find any type of rest. There's no water to cool their tongue. I'm going to read the 12th verse again. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits, like frogs, come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. Now, these evil spirits, this demonic force, is speaking through the dragon. It's giving the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet the power to speak. These are the words of demons that's coming from the dragon the beast, and the false prophet. The 13th verse says again, And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are, e for they are spirits of devils working miracles which go forth unto kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. I'm going to repeat that 14th verse again and pay close attention because they are now preparing the battle. God's incoming has caused them to gather up their armies now to make war with the Most High and His saints. For they are spirits of devils working miracles. These demons are working miracles which go forth unto kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. The miracles are going to encourage those that's going to fight in the battle with Satan, it's going to make them look powerful. This is where they start crying out who is able to make war with the beast. 
The beast is going to convince them that he's powerful. And he's going to use miracles to do that. Supernatural workings that are from a demonic spirit to convince you. It says, for they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. The 15th and final verse says, Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watches and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. In other words, stay awoke, stay aware, keep your feet planted on Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. I repeat, on Christ, the solid rock, I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. So the 15th verse says, Behold, I come as a thief. In other words, he comes when you least expect it. When that fifth vial is poured on the seat of the beast, is unexpected. And then it says, blessed is he that watches. In other words, that's alert, that stays aware and keep his garments lest he walk naked and they see his shame. So, this is what's going to happen if you allow yourself to continue to align yourself with the beast. I always say you play on the devil's playground. One day the devil will show up. And you might not have a chance to repent. It's time to repent while you have a chance. Because once your heart becomes hardened. And God's wrath is now poured upon the seat of the beast. Your reaction is not going to be to repent, to stop the torture and the pain. Your response will be to blasphemy and curse the Most High because He is your enemy. And it's a dangerous thing to fall into the hands of an angry God. So feedback, tell me what you think, subscribe, until next time. I'm fearless.